Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Recall Box 7.0 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Yes, you heard me right. Recall Box is now compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4. And with this new version of Recall Box 7.0, they've added a lot of great changes here and a few things that are gonna make your life a lot easier to get Recall Box up and running on your single board computer like the Raspberry Pi 4. So 7.0 was recently released, and as you can see, it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 1, the GPi case, the Raspberry Pi 2, the 3A+, the 3B, the 3B+, the Raspberry Pi 4, 64-bit PCs, 32-bit PCs, and the Odroid XU4. But what I'm really excited about is support for the Raspberry Pi 4. The Recall Box team has done a lot of updates to 7.0. There's a change log right here that you can download and read through, but I'm going to go over some of the key changes that I feel are going to make our lives a lot easier. Then we'll get right into some testing on the Raspberry Pi 4. So other than being compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 and a lot of emulator bumps, otherwise known as emulator updates, Recall Box has added some really cool features. So first up, automatic recovery will now show up automatically after three boots of failure. So if you try to boot this up and something goes wrong three times, it'll bring you right to the recovery. There's a brand new update system. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But my favorite new feature for Recallbox 7.0 is the new share partition. It's created in an EXFAT format. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use this. So upon a fresh install and the first boot, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. It's going to create the share partition automatically for us. And when this is finished, all we need to do to add games is take our SD card out of our single board computer, in my case, a Raspberry Pi 4. You're just going to plug it right into your Windows or Mac PC, and it's going to show the file system for us. So we can now add ROMs and BIOSes without having to do it over network or over USB or even using another Linux machine. We can do it all on Windows, and this is going to make it super easy for everybody to easily add games and BIOSes to your recall box setup. And I'm a big fan of this. I always hated doing it over network, and it took a long time to set up a USB drive. So all we really need to do now to add games is plug it directly into our PC, be it a Windows machine or a Mac. And here it is. We do have menu music in the background. You can actually disable it from the sound settings here. I'm going to go with uh, front end music off. So if you press start on your controller, we can launch Kodi Media Center from here. We have our system settings. So we're on 7.0. Disk usage, 25 gigs out of 115. And I transferred all of my ROMs over that new share partition. Easy updates. We can go stable or custom if you'd like. Moving down to game settings. Game ratio, core provided, do not set, retro arch config. There's a bunch of different things we can do here. Square pixel, one by one, 1610. I'm going to leave this on auto. Smooth games, rewind, and so on and so on. We can even add shaders directly from the recall box menu. Controller settings are basically the same here. We can configure a Bluetooth controller or a wired controller. And I'm going to go ahead and set my 360 controller to the input one. UI settings, we got screen saver, display clock and menu. I'm going to turn that on, on screen help. Lots of great features here. Sound settings, like we saw, we can turn that menu music on or off. Network settings for Wi-Fi or Ethernet. I don't have mine connected right now, but Wi-Fi is working with the Raspberry Pi 4. So the scraper is working with Recall Box 7 and the Raspberry Pi 4. I do have some that already came pre-scraped, actually. Some freeware games that come preloaded with Recall Box. Actually, we have some decent stuff here. Under advanced settings, we do not have an overclock setting for the Pi 4 yet, but you can manually overclock. I'm overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. Boot settings, so you can set this up to go to Kodi on start. You can set per system, hide system view, and you can force basic game list view. And another thing I've always liked about Recallbox and Botocera is BIOS checking. This will let you know if you have the correct BIOS installed or not, as you can see. Atari 5200, I do have the correct BIOS, but if we look up here for Amiga 600, I don't have all the BIOSes I need here. But for a majority of the stuff, I already have it set up pretty decently. So now I think it's time to get into some testing. I'm going to head up to PS1 and then we'll move up from there because I'm sure the lower end stuff's going to run just fine on this machine. We'll do PlayStation 1, PSP, and Dreamcast for this video. I will be coming out with a full tutorial video on how to get this completely set up on your Raspberry Pi 4, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. 
We're going to head right in here. And like I mentioned, I didn't do any scraping with the games that I added. Go with Bloody Roar 2. If it can run this, it's basically going to run any PS1 game at full speed. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump into some gameplay here. As I suspected, it's running PS1 brilliantly. I mean, we've always had really good PS1 emulation on the Raspberry Pi since I'd say the Raspberry Pi 2, but I still wanted to make sure it worked great with Recall Box 7. And as you can see with Bloody Roar 2, we're not having any issues at all, and it is running it at full speed. Now in order to exit, just like all of these other retro emulation front ends, just going to press Start and Select, it'll bring us right back into the Emulation Station menu. So now I'm going to go ahead and move over to Dreamcast. Unfortunately, this is not using the ReDream emulator. This only uses Raycast or Flycast in RetroArch, and we're going to be going with Flycast. We'll test out Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to start with. So performance with Dreamcast isn't great, and it really comes down to this emulator. Don't get me wrong, I do love Flycast on a more powerful unit. It actually works great. But on the Raspberry Pi 4, it just doesn't cut it. We should be running this at 60 FPS, and we're on average around 38. I figured I'd test one more here. This is Soul Calibur, a relatively easy game to emulate on x86 devices, but we're not at full speed with this one either. I've gone through the settings, messed around with as much as I could with this Flycast core, but we're just not pushing out enough power for it. Next up we have some PSP, and this is using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We have Tekken Dark Resurrection. No frame skip, no hacks, but we're at 1x resolution to get this one running at full speed. Overall, performance really isn't that bad. We're still on PSP here, but I've swapped over to Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, and this is actually a really easy one to emulate. I've had good luck on low-end devices, and we're able to upscale this one to 2x with no problems at all. But there is one that I have to test, and I don't think it's going to do a great job seeing how Tekken Dark Resurrection wasn't able to upscale, and that is Chains of Olympus. So even at 1x with frame skip enabled, we're still not at 30 FPS. Now this game should run at 60 with no frame skip on, but with frame skip set to 1. And unfortunately, this is just one of those harder to emulate games and the Raspberry Pi 4 just doesn't have the power to push it. Okay, so I'm super stoked that we now have an official version of Recall Box for the Raspberry Pi 4 and that share partition is absolutely amazing. Like I mentioned, I really hated transferring over network or using a USB, and all I need to do now is take my SD card and drag and drop my BIOSes and ROMs directly on the SD card so I can use them on my Raspberry Pi 4 with Recall Box 7. If you're interested in getting this up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4 or other single board computer, I'll leave a link to the Recall Box website in the description. And if you're not really sure how to do it, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do have a full install tutorial coming up. I'm going to go over basically everything to get Recall Box up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. This was just kind of a quick look and a heads up to let you know that Recall Box 7 is available for the Raspberry Pi 4. Definitely go check out their website. And like always, thanks for watching.